is written on the screen express rest api so please note that topic i can't be more obvious it is right there on the screen right perfect now uh, i think the youtube live is also started so we can jump in and get started uh, in the previous session we have talked about the fundamentals of express so we have taken a look at how to create an express application we have taken a look at what is express right so we have seen um, you know what express is and what role does it play it basically helps us create all the apis right Uh, yes, so like I was saying, Express is basically used to create API endpoints and we have seen a basic version of uh, this. We have seen how to create a single page, get page, and we've also seen how to send something back. And uh, uh, again, we have seen how to create an Express application. So we've seen this, uh, the command npm in it. This helps us create the application. Once the application is created, then we have uh, this whole flow where we connect through the API, through the browser, and we send a response through Express. So today we'll talk about this in more detail. How do we read input from the user? You know, what kind of input can we get from the user? All those things we will discuss, right? And then we've also seen this extension in VS Code known as Thunder Client, okay? So this Thunder Client extension helps us test these API calls without opening the browser in every case. Right? So we don't need to open the browser and reload things every time. What we can do instead is we can use this extension uh, to test it within VS Code. So that is the setup that we're going to uh, already we have seen. We'll keep using this today as well. Right. And here is today's agenda. So we'll take another look at what an API is, a quick discussion on that. Then we'll jump to something called a RESTful API. So there are certain properties, seven to eight properties that an API must follow in order to be RESTful. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll move to the different HTTP methods. So this is where uh, we will write all the code, right? So we'll create several different endpoints, get, post, put, patch, delete. These are some of the different API methods which allow us to add, edit, update, delete data. Uh, from the backend and that is what we are going to take a look at. So again, let's start by discussing the API uh, one more time. Like you might remember, I gave you a restaurant example for this and wherein the waiter in the restaurant serves as the middleman, which is basically the API. Right. So when we go to a restaurant and when we order food, we are the customer or we are the client. The kitchen is the server. Right? The kitchen in this example is the backend or the server. And then the waiter mediates between the two. The waiter will take order from us, communicate it to the kitchen, and then get the dish from the kitchen and bring it to us. So this middle way communication, this is called an API. And so that's basically what happens in the real world context as well. So what we do is we start by creating our own APIs. We call them endpoints, right? API endpoints. So for every database task that we want to perform or every backend tasks that we want to perform like login, sign up, make a payment, uh, fetch order details, search products, filter products, sort products, whatever functionality we are trying to create or build, we will create an API endpoint for that functionality, right? So typically we have four standard operations that we perform. It's called CRUD. That's C-R-U-D. Create, read, update, and delete. Creation means inserting data into the backend or the database. Read means fetching data from the backend. Then we have update, which is modifying data and delete that's removing data. So these are four standard operations that we perform and corresponding to each of these, we have a, a get, we have a HTTP method available, like get, post, put, patch, delete, et cetera, right? But again, before we jump to those, there are several different types of APIs that are out there, okay? So so for example, there is something called SOAP API. So they follow a particular pattern or different syntax. 
they are called soap apis then there are other kinds of apis known as rest apis so rest actually stands for representational state transfer right so we have something called rest api and that is what we are going to focus on whenever we create mon applications or mean applications or in fact in today's setup or uh, in today's development setup mostly the apis that we deal with are restful apis we call them restful apis right now there are a couple of properties that an api must follow in order for it to become uh, or be called a restful api so let me walk you through those properties one by one right the first thing that we have for a restful api is called statelessness okay so this api is said to be stateless what that basically means is we don't have a initial and a final state we cannot reconnect to the same api every information is sent or every time we want to fetch something the data is sent from the uh, api with the api call right so this means that the server does not remember where the api was initially right there is no history that is maintained by the server Right. So yes, so like I was saying, right, the first property of a RESTful API is that it is stateless, which basically means that the server does not remember any previous interaction with the API. So every API request or every API call is treated as a new API call. Right. So there is no state, no history that is stored. Every request contains all the information. That is the first property called statelessness again you don't really need to remember these properties i am just telling these to you so that we understand the concept of restful apis and then we'll take a look at how to code it out the second property is client server architecture so this basically means that there is a separation of concerns right client and server are separated in terms of the responsibilities that they have client send a request and server send a response that is fixed so we are separating the concerns between client and server the third property is uniform interface. So again, we'll see this every HTTP method has a common interface. First, we use app dot method name. Then we use request response and a callback. So the implementation syntax for every single um, HTTP method is the same, no matter which method it is. So uniform interface is the next property. Then we have resource based. Right? So again, we have endpoints that we specify and we can only access them through the endpoints only. So we define these resources by these endpoints, which are called URIs. And then we modify them with the help of the HTTP methods. Then we have something called representation. So again, R-E-S-T. So that R here stands for representation. Representation basically means we are using a standard data format like JSON. So since we are working with JavaScript, JSON is the best option for us. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Right? JavaScript Object Notation. So that is the idea. That's JSON. Then we have the state transfer. So this is where we have resource sharing between the client and the server. The client sends a request along with all the data that needs to be sent. And then the server responds with the response. Again, containing or consisting of all the raw data that needs to be sent. So that is state transfer. Again, the ST in REST stands for state transfer. So RE is representational, ST is state transfer. That is a full form of the REST API, right? representational state transfer. Finally, it is uh, it also supports the idea of cache ability, right? which is basically the idea that we can store some data, store some information in the browser. So in the next session, when we take a look at authentication with Express, I will tell you how do we actually create cookies and how do we store those cookies in the browser such that if somebody logs in from any one of the tabs, their login is considered in all other tabs as well. Right? And unless they log out explicitly, the login is pertained over time. Right? So if you come back in the evening and try to open the same website, you are still logged in. You don't have to log in again. 
but maybe if you come back the next day you are required to log in again because by that time the login details could be expired right so we'll take more we'll talk more about this in the next session that's cacheability right and finally we have something called layered system so this is again uh, we'll talk more about this with authentication what we can do is we can have middle layers or we call it middleware in terms of express wherein we can have certain other functionality some checks some validation done before we want to perform the actual tasks so before we like after we get the request and before we send the response in the middle we can add some functionality that we want that is what layered system means right so these are some of the different properties that are available and if an api follows all these properties then it is classified or then it is categorized to be a restful api okay so once an api follows everything uh, all these properties it is qualified or it is called as restful right perfect now before we jump into the next topic i've just uh, i just want to discuss quickly regarding the projects right so since there is a lot of question and confusion regarding projects let me quickly tell you uh, what is going on in terms of the projects and what is your next step so uh, the first thing that i want to show you is the sample document so let me just share the screen again uh, if you might remember we have already seen this it is available in the repository that you have okay let me just open that up so that i can show it to you so once you open the repository right in this repository i think i have added that sample project document somewhere uh, let me just try to find it okay i think it was in one of the sessions uh okay no worries i will add that in but uh, the point is that when it comes to the projects let me just open it up on my system i will also add it over there just give me one second so oh, also in the meanwhile uh, whatever doubts you might have regarding the projects please put them in the chat uh, let's quickly take a look at those questions and answer them as well i'm just trying to find that sample uh, project report and i will just share that as well there you go so it is available in session 10 uh, let me show you where it is so if i just head to the repository right in the repository it's already available under session 10 okay so in the project talk you can see i have uploaded this library management sample report okay so when you work on the project you are expected to do two things okay now listen to this very carefully i will answer all the questions that are there in the chat but before that, please listen to the guidelines or instructions very carefully. You have to give two deliverables at the end of the project. The first thing that you have to submit or prepare is a project report. What you see on the screen right now, this is already available in the repository under session 10. Okay, so the topic is project talk. Within this repository, the sample uh, within this folder, the sample report is already available as you can see. So you have to follow a similar structure to create your own project report. Okay, the syntax will, the format of the document will exactly be the same. So you will have the project abstract. This will be given to you by the team. And then we'll have the introduction section, system analysis, system design, implementation, testing, conclusion everything as it is okay so all of these sections you can see there are more pages also it's a proper document and right? everything that you need in a sample setting is given over here for your reference so please don't copy paste it this is for an e-library system none of your topics will include this 
okay no topic that has been given to you has something similar so please make sure you don't copy paste anything from here this is just a reference point so this is the first thing that you're supposed to create a project report now obviously this report will mention your project title it will mention all your team details along with your college registration numbers and it will also contain the uh, abstract okay that will be the first thing that you see okay so this is a mandatory document this needs to be submitted to the university so this is something that you have to create properly without any uh, problems or without anything missing so everything that you see in this sample it must be there in the report as well right so this index can be followed you need to have an introduction you need to have system analysis you need to have system design you need to have implementation details along with screenshots of the final output you also need to have some testing uh, logic not exactly testing in detail but just simple test so you're checking if something is working, search results showing fine, those kind of things. And then you have your introduction and system analysis. So these things are required. Okay, This is something that you require for sure. This is definitely required. Then we also have conclusion, future scope and references. So these are some of the things that you, like these are the basic details that must be mentioned in the document. Okay, So again, the document is available in the repository if you go to the repository under session 10, where we have the term project talk under this topic, you can see the document is available library management system sample report. Okay. So you can open this, you can download this and this is uh, your final report. So this is your reference for the report. This is the first thing that you have to create. The second thing that you have to create for the project is the actual code for the project right so once we wrap up the sessions which is this um, the next week by next week we'll wrap up the sessions right so soon after that or even before that if possible you will already start working on the project with your team members now a form was circulated to everybody all of you have received it in the email okay so for people who are asking me in the chat how to create a team we have already sent out a form last week itself. That form required you to do two things. It required you to pick a topic and choose your team members. Okay. You were required to pick a topic as well as choose your team members. Please make sure you fill that form as soon as possible. Try to make sure that your team members are obviously from your own college. If you are an individual person, if you are the only person from the college, please fill the form with only your name. Okay. We will try to combine you with other colleges who also have limited people in there. Okay. So what you can do is even if you are an individual member from the college, just make sure you fill the form with your details and pick a topic. We will then go through that list and we'll combine you with some group and we'll put you in a group. Okay. So that is something that we will do. But you will have to fill the form for us to be able to do this. Okay, I think there are still a lot of people who have not submitted the form. So please make sure you submit the form first. Unless you submit the form and you choose a project topic, it is not going to work. Okay, so that is the setup. Once you have the form, once you have submitted the form, we will receive the form. And then it will take us a couple of days to make the respective WhatsApp groups right to make the uh, respective team allocation and all of that so we are still waiting for submission some of you have submitted them sure but we haven't received it from everybody and we can't work unless we have all the results or all the submissions so for people who have not submitted it please make sure you submit it today by tomorrow the earliest you can okay we can keep tomorrow night as the deadline try to submit the form by tomorrow night Please don't wait for the deadlines, you guys, unless you submit that, nothing will happen. Okay. So try to submit it as soon as possible. Again, when you fill the form, please make sure only one person from the team fills the form. Okay. You don't need to submit the same team details four times. So only one team member should submit the form by mentioning the details of everybody in the team. Right. Only one team member can submit the form. But mention everybody's details. Mention the details of all your team members. 
okay that is your process once you submit the form you also have to choose the project title over there the list is available right so please choose the title and uh, please uh, submit the form okay now as soon as we receive the form submissions from all of you we will be then creating the respective communication channels it could be email groups it could be whatsapp groups it could be telegram we'll figure that out right depending on uh, how many groups are to be created and once that is done then you can go ahead and you can start working on the project okay again if you're facing any issues with anything like this please get in touch with the team you can contact akila you have the support email with you right please contact the team and they will get back to you give the team a few days for a reply okay so if you send a query today please wait for 2 to 3 days to expect a response it is not possible to reply to all queries immediately because we have so many people there are thousands of uh, you know we have a lot of people and we have a lot of colleges also right? so it is difficult to reply every uh, very soon so we'll need 3 to 5 days to reply to your queries so you can reach out to us on email if you have a whatsapp support number please reach out over there but give us a few days to reply okay it is not possible that you can expect the message immediately it will take some time right now once you get the abstract after your team is formed after you have uh, received the project abstract then what you can do is you can start working on the report one and you can also start creating the front end and the back end for it which is the second deliverable what i recommend is you take some time and you uh, divide the responsibility between your team members right so we are expecting i think four to five members a team um, that was the limit at right? four to five members in a team so let's say you get a bigger system let's say you get an e-commerce system for example so you will have to divide the work okay so for example one person will make the login page and sign up page one person can make the home page one person can make the product page try to make uh, try to divide the work in such a way that everybody gets to do everything right for example whoever is working on the home page also get to do the back end for the home page also gets to do the database for the home page whoever is working on the product page also gets to do the back end also gets to do the database that is the only way you can ensure that you know everything right so don't split the work like you do front end i will do back end you will do database don't do it like this split the work in such a way that everybody gets to do a little bit of everything right so that way you will be able to experiment with react also express also and mongodb also this will prepare you better for interviews that come up later right so trust me don't divide the work in a way that one person only does front end one person only does back end that way nobody will know everything right you cannot answer back end questions they cannot answer front end questions so it's very difficult in that way right so yes the idea is after you receive the abstract which will only happen after you submit the form so for people who have not submitted the forms please try to submit them latest by tomorrow okay we can close the deadline so let's put tomorrow as a deadline after tomorrow we will not take any submissions so it is very important that you finish it off by tomorrow only then we will be able to get in touch with you we will be able to share the abstracts with you and only then we can start working on the projects right so please make sure you submit the form uh, again so for people uh, now i am going to take the questions from the chat right one by one so i think the first question here is that the team lead is already part of another team so again that means you are not properly choosing a team one person cannot be in two teams so make somebody else the team lead choose another member right? this is your choice remember we are not making the teams now you have to choose right so you have to choose um you know the your team so obviously you will have to make sure that one person or you yourself are not part of two different teams obviously right you cannot work on two projects so please make sure that your team members are not in any other team and if they have already submitted the names for another team then you will have to find other team members okay that's the idea uh i'm going to pick youtube questions first and then i will come to the zoom chat so i'll just pick questions one by one and i'll just answer them
Right. So the first question here is by Mahesh. He says we are not able to create the team. It was not accepting our members. So again, Mahesh, there could be two reasons. Number one, you should not be meet. You might not be meeting the minimum members criteria. Right. So please make sure that you fill the form with correct amount of team members and also make sure you fill it with proper details. You will see those fields, star fields, they are mandatory fields. So unless you submit all those things, it will not work. Right. And again, uh, if you have already uh, filled the form, please don't fill it again. Okay. If you have already filled the form, please don't fill it again. Uh... Again, so we have been very, very careful with this, you guys. So please, you will not be able to make changes to the team now. And right? we can't go back and forth so many times. So it is very difficult to change team members now. So whatever team you have submitted in the form, let's keep that as the final team because we have very less time. If we spend more time here, then you will not get enough time to complete the project. Right? So we have to be very quick with this. So yes, for people who are asking, only one member of the team, the team leader needs to submit the form. Okay, you don't have to submit the form. Like everybody in the team does not have to submit the form. Only the team leader can submit the form. That's it. Okay, the deadline for this is going to be tomorrow night. So please make sure that you submit the forms by tomorrow night. If you have any doubts or questions regarding this, please reach out to the support team. I really can't help you with those changing of team questions or, um, you know, all those kind of things. So you'll have to reach out to the support team for that. I am sure you already have the email ID, uh, the support email ID, right? So please reach out to that email. Again, the team will reply in a few days. There are a lot of queries already. So we are already working on them, but it could take up to three to five days, right? Um, regarding this. So up to three to five days. Uh, for the response. Okay. So you can, again, if you don't have anybody else to work with, if you are facing problems in the submission, please write an email to the support team and they will assist you. Okay. So that is the idea. Again, whatever names have been submitted will be done now. We don't, we will not be able to make changes to this. Right. Uh, so yes, uh, if you have submitted the names, that's it. Please don't submit the form again. Anyway, the form will not take the same name twice. So you cannot submit the form again anyway. Right. So that is the idea. Okay. I think these are all the questions. Every question is just a repetition of the same thing. Right. Uh, team title and project title are two different things. Team title is the name that you want to give for your team. Right. And then project title is the project title. So they're two different things. Right. And um, yes, so you will have mentors as well, right? Chandu, uh, for people who are asking about mentors, after we get the teams, we can allocate mentors to your team. So again, unless you submit the forms, unless we make teams, uh, it is not going to be uh, possible to allocate mentors. So you have to submit the forms first. Uh, how much minimum pages can the report contain? So if you see the sample report, it contains about 60, 70 pages. You can also make a report around the same number of pages at 60 to 70, uh, 50 to 60 pages, I guess, you know, should be, um, should be done. And the project needs to be completed by April. As far as I know, April end is the completion date for the project, right? So March end, we finish all the sessions and then you have one month of time to complete the project. So you are, um, you have one month or so to make it. Again, Sheikh Salim, we have sent an email to you asking for your team member preferences. So you are deciding the team. Okay. You are deciding the team. Please make sure you fill that form so that we know who you want to be in your team. So we are not allocating the team now since a lot of people asked us that you want to choose your own team members. So we have sent you a form. You can choose your own team members. Mentors we will allocate after we create the teams. We'll allocate individual mentors. Basically, one mentor will cater to 10, 15 groups. So they can focus on those many groups. So we'll do that only after we have all the teams. Right. That is what we uh, have to do. Okay. Perfect. So these are all the questions for the projects as of now. Again, if you have any doubts or issues with this, uh, please reach out to the team. If I get any further updates, I will let you know in the next session. Right. Perfect. Now let us jump into.
uh, the code again. So yes, the idea is that you guys, we want the team to be from the, we want everybody in the team to be from the same college because the final project report is going to go to your university. They will grade you. They will give you the marks. So we cannot have a setup where you have people from different colleges. That is why the form has a check such that all the team members must belong to the same college. And that is true, right? which is how it is supposed to be. So that is a correct condition that we have put over there. Right. So, yes, I think those are all the questions that um, I have in the chat for now. Uh, yes. Now let's jump into the topic. I'm not sure if you'll be able to finish what is planned for today, but let's start and see where we get. Okay. Uh, yes. So now again, I will take uh, the project questions later. I guess I'll also um, probably ask the team to arrange a separate session. Maybe in the next session, we can have the first half an hour or so uh, where somebody from the team can join in to help you with your queries. Okay, let's do that in the next session because they will be able to answer them better. So I'll probably ask them to join so that they can answer your questions better. But for now, please try to submit all the forms, right? Submit your team forms uh, the soon, as soon as possible. Right? So as soon as you can, um, please submit them. Okay, perfect. Now the next bit that we are focusing on today are HTTP methods. So we have already seen one version of this in the previous case which was the get method app dot get right? so the first method that we've already seen is the get method which is where we um, um we use it to get some data from the server that's basically what the purpose of the get method is so let's start from this again i will give you a quick uh, example of this once again and then we can go ahead and move to the next couple of methods so if this time around what we are also going to do is to pass in some data uh, you know from the request so to make it a little more dynamic, a little more real world. Okay. So now let me uh, start this whole thing. So I have not created the express application here. So if you remember the command, the command is npm init hyphen y. Okay. So this is our command. This will create the application for us. Then let's install everything that we need. So here we need the node mon dependency first. So I'm going to install that. If you remember, we used Nodemon to keep running the express server or keep refreshing the express server on its own. So every time we save the file, it will automatically reload. Right? Then we need express. So install express. This is everything that we need for now, I think. Now let's jump in and take a look at the code. So the first step is to modify our package.json file. So here we can replace the start script. So instead of the test script, we can write start. And this is going to be nodemon index.js. Perfect. Then we can go ahead and create our file. So the file is index.js and I've created it now. In the file, the first thing that we have to do is to require express. So we can say const express is equal to require express, right? So this is how we can import express. Then we can say const app is equal to express. This is going to be our application. Then we can say const port. We can give it some value like so. And then we can say app dot listen. This function app dot listen is going to trigger or initiate our application. And this will contain a callback. So we can pass a callback like this. And we have to pass a port number over here. Right? So we have passed in this 3002 port number. And then we can pass in the logic. So we can say all we want to do for now is console.log app running. Or we can say server started. Let's call it server running, something like this. This is it. Right? Once we write this line of code, then our server should work fine. How do we start this? Well, we can say npm start. So as soon as we type npm start in the terminal, you can see it says server running. The server has started running, but there is no logic that we have written for the server to actually work. Or in other terms, we have not given any API endpoint to the user or to the client to be able to interact with the server. So for that, what we can do is we can use the get method to create an endpoint. Let's create the home endpoint. Then over here, we take two parameters, request and response. We'll work with these now, right? And this is the get method. Now, 
in the request what we want to do is we uh, from the request what we can do is we can read some inputs so whatever is coming from the user we can get that data right on the other hand response will help us send data back so we can say for example in this case response.json and then we can pass in a json object let's say status success so we're just sending a success status over here we have also seen how to test it so let me open our thunder client let's create a new request right over here and the port number is 3002 so we can say http the this is going to be local host and then the port is 3002 okay and as soon as we hit the get request on the home route remember this is the path that we have written so as soon as we hit a request here you can see it returns with a status success if we want to send additional data we can send that over here as well for example let's say username and let's say for example the username is something like this so what we can do is if we hit the same endpoint again you can see this time we get two data items back the status message along with the username this is everything that we have already discussed in the previous session right we have seen how to create the application we have seen how to uh, write the get route we have seen how to send the data back all of this is already has already been discussed right now the next thing that we want to do is to be able to read some data from the user and then based on that let us say that we want to perform some logic okay so let us assume that we have no idea how to do this well in that case what we can do is we can get to the documentation so we can say read request data in Express, for example right and then you will see we have some other um, things available. So if you check this documentation, there are so many different documentations. We find something called request.body. Okay. So this request.body will basically help us read the inputs coming from the user. Okay. So now let us go ahead and check that out. How can you do this? Well, let us go ahead and see. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to read the data coming from the request. So let's call it const data is equal to request dot body. This is a built in object okay. request dot body is a built in property if you can see and this is an object. So this will contain key value pairs. What we can do is over here instead of sending these things we can just say data and respond with everything. So we can say data data. We can also just put it once that will also do the same thing. Now how do we check this in the request well we can go to our api call over here you will see a section called body so in the thunder client once we open it up we can see the there is a section called body this is where we can provide the json data so for example let us say that the data is username john123 again this is coming from the request right so we can get the username and the password for example from the request and then right now, all, all we are doing is we are just sending it back. So if we connect to the endpoint now, let us connect. So I'm going to hit the endpoint again. You can see this does not give us anything. Okay, this does not return anything. But let us spread this out. So let's say that we respond with username. And let's say this is request or rather this is data dot um, username, for example. Let's see if this works. You can see now this is app crashed. Right? It says unexpected token. So there is something wrong um, over here. And I think we will have to extract it outside here. So we can say request.body.username. And then we can just say username like so. I think this should be fine. So username equals username colon username. Let's check. So now the error is gone. Let me just go back to the API and hit it again. So you can see this time we get some internal server error. It says cannot read properties of undefined, right? And this is happening because we are missing a dependency. Okay, We are missing a dependency here known as the body parser. So unless we have that dependency, the backend is not able to read the data coming from the request. This is called the body parser. So we can say npm install body parser. Looks like this. Now, as soon as we install this, we should be able to use it. So just like we use the application, we can say const body parser is equal to requ require and then body parser. Okay. And then we can go ahead and use it. How do we use it? We can see app dot use. We can specify body parser dot json. 
because we are working with JSON data. Now, without making any changes, if I just go back and run the server again, so that's npm start, okay? And this time around, if we try to connect, we should hopefully see the response. You can see the error is now gone, right? So this is how we can work with this setting, okay? Now, in a similar way, we can also access the password. It is bad practice to use passwords like this. They should always be encrypted. But just to quickly show this to you, we can provide the password here as well. So password, password. Now let's connect to the API again. You can see the same data that is coming from the request is now being displayed in the response as well. So this is the request data and then this is the response data, right? So now again, what I will do is I will tell you the steps quickly. I will leave the code on the screen and I will give you five minutes to experiment with this, right? What is the uh, setup here? Well, the first thing is we are installing one additional dependency called body parser. So to install this, the command is npm i body hyphen parser. Okay. This is what you have to install. Then you have to also install your express. So the command for this is npm install express. Then we are creating the app. So create a new express app, right? Then we initialize the body parser. So initialize body parser. This will enable our application to read the JSON data coming from the request, right? Then we are specifying the port. So specify the port number. Okay. Once this is done, then we are extracting so the reading username from request. Okay. Similarly, this is reading password from request. Once we have those details, then we are displaying data. So display or rather return data, return data. Okay, this is returning it back to the user as a JSON object. And then this line of code app.listen, this is going to run the app. And then this is in the console, print, print in the console or print to the console rather. That makes more sense, right? Perfect. So this is the entire code for this. I will leave this on the screen for five minutes and you can experiment with this. So the only new thing here is this body parser this line, then line five is new for us. And finally, this syntax is new for us, request.body. So when you run this in Thunder Client, you have to head over to the body part in the request that is available over here. So we head to the body section and then we provide the JSON data in the JSON format. And so this is the JSON format. And then you should be able to read and respond this in the server. Okay. So this is the syntax. I'll give you five minutes, five to seven minutes to quickly experiment with this. Then we'll come back. We'll take another look at this code and move to the next HTTP method.
All right, yes. Um, hi guys. So we are back. Uh, yes, I just need five minutes to break the fast. Right, it's Ramadan going on. So yes, I just had to do that. Uh, but yes, so let's continue from where we left off. I hope you tried this out, right? And um, yes, so now uh, let me show you what we've done once again. And then we'll move to the next method that is available, right? So the first thing that we have done today is installed a new package called body parser. Whenever we exchange any data uh, from to and fro, right, from the request, whenever a data item comes in, uh, we have to read it. And the only way we can do that is with the help of this package called body parser. So within body parser, we have to then specify which data we want to read, which we are specifying over here. We are saying in this application, use the body parser for JSON data. So whenever a request comes in with JSON data, we will now be able to read it. Okay, that's the setting. Then how do we extract the data? Well, we are doing that over here. We are saying request dot body dot username. So this username is coming as a JSON data uh, or rather request dot body is the JSON data coming in. Out of that or from that, we want to extract the username. Similarly, here we are extracting the password and then we are saying, okay, return this. Now, what do we want to return? For now, we are simply returning username and password back. But typically in a real world application, we would want to take some input from the user. Based on that, we would want to perform some processing and then respond with the output. Right? For example, let us say that we are building a search button. So in the search button, we will read the query, the search query from the user. Right. Then based on that search query, what we will do is we will come up with, um, you know, a logic. We'll come into the database, fetch the data that we want. And then we will go ahead and we will respond to the user with that, um, with that query, right. Or with that data that we have come up with. So again, I am getting a lot of uh, project questions actually. Um, ideally, again, I will be very, um, honest. Ideally, in an ideal scenario, you should not be changing your topics. So I am sure there, are, there must have been a reason why you chose the topic in the first place, right? So if possible, please try to stick to the same topic. But if you think that it is impossible or you will never be able to create a project for that topic, again, please reach out to the support team. Please mention all your team members. Please mention all the relevant details and then give us some time to look into it. I don't guarantee that it will change, but you can definitely reach out and the team will see what is possible. Okay. There is so much um, work going on right now. There are so many colleges. There is constant communication going on. So in a lot of cases, uh, it could be that, um, you know, uh, we are not able to help. Okay. In some cases, change requests might not be so, um, you know, change requests are something that we might not be able to help you with, but still you can just drop an email to the support team mentioning these things. Okay. So again, putting these in the chat will not help. Please reach out to the support team. Again, I will try to get somebody from the team in the next session. Right. So that, uh, you know, we'll be able to, um, you know, they will be able to help you better at these questions. Okay. So whatever doubts you have, please keep them with you for one more day on Wednesday. In the session on Wednesday, I will ask somebody from the team to join and they'll probably be able to help you better. Right? Is that okay? Will that work? Uh, all right, perfect. Now, Coming back to the topic here. So today we are focusing on understanding the CRUD operations right, that we perform using the backend. So now that we have understood how to just get some data and respond back and forth, uh, what we can actually do here is that we can actually try to connect this to the front end. But again, we'll discuss that as well next time in the next session, because that's where we'll work with authentication. So we'll read these details from a form in React. And then we will connect React and Express, and then we'll be able to figure out the whole thing, right? For now, let us jump to the next method and experiment with that. So now we have one method, the get method available on this route, which is the home route. 
let's create the next method okay and what i will also do here is i will just create an array so let's add some logic to this let's call an array create an array called users now every time a data comes in every time there is a guest request a get request what we want to do is we can say users dot push and we'll just add these details to the array okay so we are just adding the username and the password to our array and at the end of the response what we can do is we can try to print it out so go console dot log users so every time we send a get request we are creating a new user okay and we are just printing it out to see if we are able to store those details or not so let us send this once again and i think our server is not running right now let us run this so that's npm start okay let's send this again you can see success if we check the terminal or the console now you will see the user details are shown up username is john123 password is john i will also quickly add two more users like so so let's change the details here instead of john let's say we put another name like jane so jane is the next user okay let's send this so now we have two users if you see the terminal we get two responses john and jane let's add one more and then we can uh, work with this so let's go for something like jacob for example and uh, let's go so set and now we should have three users in our database like you can see so we have three users now perfect now let me stop the server so that we don't end up doing anything uh, or sending the request again by mistake right so at this point when we restart the application all this data will be gone okay if i just go ahead and i restart the app now all this data will be gone you can see there is an empty display if we send the request there is only one user now right so this is all temporary data naturally unless we have the database uh, we will not be able to store data permanently right? so for now this is all temporary we'll add them again but now what we want to do is in the next case in the next logic we can get some data from the user which is called the post method so typically when the data comes from a form right we use the post method and the post method is typically used we'll use the same route we'll go respect, uh, request response we'll write the same um, you know syntax so now the post method is where the user sends something to the server in order to process for example let us say that we are registering as a new user uh, you know or anything like that so actually this user creation logic this should go in the post method okay the get method is where we simply respond with what we have okay so here we can just respond with the entire users array so we can just send the entire users array as the response so we can say json dot stringify and then we can pass in the array this method will convert users to json data first okay so this is our get again get is used to read data from the server okay then we have the post method so this is used to send data to the server so here what we're doing is we are posting the username and password and then the server is adding it to the collection or adding it to our data then we have something called so used to update data okay this is going to be the put and patch we have two options the first method is called the put method so uh, let's say request response okay and then there is something going to be something that's called patch now there is a difference in which they work i'll tell you more about them in just a minute and finally we have delete so we have used to delete data and this is going to be app dot delete so let us say that the user name that we provide based on that we can modify certain values right so here what we will get is we'll get the user name from the request so request dot body dot user name in the update case we are reading the user name and based on the user name we will try to modify the values similarly in the delete what we will do is we are going to 
delete the user from the array if that username matches. Okay. So again, we have created five different methods. If you see here, get, post, put, patch, and delete. These are the five standard HTTP methods that we have. Get is used to read data from the server and just respond it back to the screen. So we are just responding with a list of all the users. Then post is used to read data from the user, get data from the user. So here what we're doing is we are reading the data from the user. And at the end, we can say response.json, uh, let's say message user added. This is user added. Okay, so we're just telling the uh, screen, or you know, sending this in the re response, telling the user that the user has been created. Similarly, in the case of update, what we can do is we can say user updated. We still have to write the update logic. We have not written that just yet, right? Then we can also put that over here, and then here we can say user deleted. Now, how do we update something? This is a question for you. Let us say that we want to update something in JavaScript uh, using an array. So we have an array, which is what we have an array of objects. So what can we do? How can we update the data in the array? Oh, yes, yes, I am. I am fasting. I mean, it's time to open the fast now, which is why I took a break. But yes, I do fast. Um, yes, but I'm waiting for the solution to this. So can you tell me how do you update the data? Normal JavaScript question. How do you update an array in JavaScript? Okay, let us assume that we do not know. Let us assume that we do not know. So let's check. Update array of objects in JavaScript. So let's see. We have so many different options. You can see we have a similar setup. So we have employee data, right? And the method that we use here is the map method. We have already covered this in React. This is exactly why I asked you, right? So you should know this. We have already covered this in React. Okay. So this is the logic. I have just copied the logic. Let me paste it over here. Now, what we can do is we can say const, uh, we don't need this. We can say users is equal to, and then users dot map, okay, take individual user, wherein user dot, let's say username. If user dot username is equal to the username coming from the request, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to return the other user details, but let us say that we are modifying their password. So the new password could be new password. And again, the new password is something that we will take from the user. So let's call it new. Basically what we're doing here is we are creating a functionality in order to update data. Okay. So update password rather. So what we're taking from the user is, okay, what is your username? And then what is your new password? Then in the user's array, what we're doing is we are running a map. And we are saying for each user check, if the username matches the username coming from the request, then we return the password. We modify the password. Finally, we return that details, right? So this is what we're doing. Let's test it. So now, first of all, uh, first of all, we have to add the users because the server is not running. So when I start the server, we have to still add users. So we have added one user now. Let's send this and uh, Let's check this out. Okay, yes, so, so this is no longer the get method. It is the post method. I have done that. And okay. Right, so we run into another problem here. It just cannot read properties of undefined. Let's check the logic. Yes, I think this is the problem. We have written it incorrectly. Request should come first and then response should come second. It's a strict constraint. Let's send this. Perfect. User added. Done. We can see the user in the terminal as well. Let's add another user. So let's add John123. The password is John. Let's send this. Perfect. We have two users now as we can verify from the terminal. 
if I change this to the get method now, we should get these two users back. And you can see that is exactly what we get. We get username Jacob123, password is Jacob, then username John123, password is John. This weird syntax that we get, this can be fixed if we actually remove the stringify in this case, because we're already saying response.json. So it will automatically send us the correct response. So if I send the same thing, okay, the server restarted. So we'll have to insert the data again. Let's post that data back in. So that's John and let's put another data for or Jacob. So again, this is a problem with backend until we connect with the database, we have to work with this. So now you can see we get a proper syntax and perfect. Now we have the data with us. Now let us write the put method. So the put method is going to require two parameters. The first is a username and then we have something called new password, which is let's call it Jacob new. Okay. Let me send this again. You can see now it says assignment to a constant variable. So there is some logic problem. And yes, I think we cannot modify users like this. Uh, this is not possible. So we should just say users.map probably. And again, that will restart the server, which means we have to insert data back. So let's insert the data again. So that's password one. Let's add one more user. So that's John one, two, three. Let's put this as John. Okay, done. Let's go to put now. And then we want to put new password, right? And this can be John new, for example. Let me send it. Perfect. You can see now it says user updated. Let us get the user details again. I'm going to send this. And you can see this time around, we still get the old data. Right? And that is because we have not updated the data in the logic. We are updating the user definitely, but we have not stored this in the new user. Okay, so we are not, we have not modified the actual array, which is available over here. Okay, but then again, our logic is working. You can see the password is getting modified. Uh, we get the success message. So if we go back to our put response, we do get the success message. Right? Perfect. In a similar way, what you can do as a challenge is try to figure out the logic for delete. How do we delete something from an array and try to do this? Right. What we are going to do in the next session is work with a program or work on a mini project. We are going to put it all together. So we'll see how to combine this with the front end so that we can take data from the front end and then we can work with it. So we'll do that part next. Right. But again, these are the five different methods that we have available with us. Get method. Then we have the post method, which is for submitting data to the server. Then we have the put method. This is updation or replacing data. Then we have patch method. This is adding on to existing data. And finally, we have delete, which is removing data. So we'll take another look at these things and we'll work with, um, you know, connecting back into the front end in the next session. For now, here is the first question for today. So again, you can take a minute, read the question and then uh, put the correct answer in the chat. Perfect. So the correct answer here is option two, right? We have just seen to create a new user. We have to use the post method. We have just seen that. So the option is not one, but two, two is the correct answer. Here is the next question for you.
Okay, so the correct answer here is option three. Like most of you obviously guessed it, this is removes data from a server. And uh, that brings us to the final question for today. All right, so the answer to this one is option one, right? Put is used to update or replace data. Uh, patch is used to connect or um, you know partially modify data. Post is used to send data or add new data. And get is used to collect or fetch data. So these are the four different methods. And yes, we have discussed a little bit about them today. We'll take another look at them in the next session as well uh, by creating a mini project of a sort. Right. So yes, that is what we have covered today. Again, for people who are asking about the topic of the session, let me just head back to the first slide and um, here. So here is your topic, right? Express JS REST API. Let me just get the feedback link shared as well. So just give me a minute. I am just asking the team to send it. Yes, the feedback link has also been shared uh, on both Zoom as well as on YouTube. Right. So please make sure you fill the feedback in. And yes, that is it for this particular session. Um, yes, we will use Bcrypt, uh, Dinesh, right? Dinesh, we will use Bcrypt for authentication, definitely. And Bharat, let me get somebody from the team in the next session uh, to answer project questions because I can't really answer most of those questions. So just wait for another day when we connect on Wednesday. Let's uh, take up those questions then. Right. Uh, all right. Perfect. So yes, that is it for this session. Uh, thank you so much you guys for attending. Make sure you fill the feedback form in before you leave. And again, I will update the code and everything else in the repository once the session gets over. So you can then take a look at that as well. But yes, that is it for this uh, one. Thank you so much you guys for attending. I will see you in the next one on Wednesday.